Hi there and welcome back. So in this video we will be taking a look at the spina bifida, one of the neuro disorder. So this is, as some of us may already know that this is another congenital disorder called spina bifida. Uh, spina bifida is a congenital defect in the spinal column uh, due to imperfect union of vertebral parts. If we bifurcate the word, it will tell us spina bifida, bi means two, feed means split, usually occurs in the lumbar region and there are several forms. So you could have a occulta, which is like a, a tiny minor form. Uh, the vertebral lesion is covered over with skin and evident only on x-ray exam. In its most minor form, there is no defect in the skin and the only evidence of its presence may be a small dimple with a tuft of hair. Then you can have a cystica. Now cystica involves protrusion of the meninges called meningeal cell or protrusion of the meninges and spinal cord that is labeled as meningeal myelocell. This cystica can involve hydrocephalus that we reviewed in our previous uh, session, uh, paraplegia and lack of control of bladder and rectum. Surgery may be indicated to remove the herniated tissue. Okay, so that's the overview of the spina bifida. Now, you could say like a mild or moderate or severe uh, occulta, meningeal cell, and myelomeningeal cell. See the difference? Right? Now, underwriters may be more interested in the statistics. So, data indicates that there is one per thousand babies may be born with spina bifida, the birth defect. Okay? And there are other, other details out there as we get into the mild to moderate to severe, the data may change from occulta to meningeal cell to um, myelomeningeal cell. Uh, what can be the symptoms? It depends on uh, how mild, how severe it is. Okay. But in the severe cases, it can go all the way up to the uh, disability. So, another list of what can be the potential signs and symptoms, uh, loss of bladder and bowel control and sensation and possible paralysis of the legs, uh, weakness in the hips, legs, feet, hydrocephalus, urinary tract infections, inflammation in the meninges are all possible signs. It can be transmitted or caused due to being genetic or maybe environmental factors or sometimes you know in early pregnancy with high temperatures taking some anti seizure medications okay and if you are medically obese, uh, that could contribute to spina bifida. So maternal diabetes, family history we already reviewed obesity, uh, increased body temperature, same thing, some of the medications. Folic acid deficiency is also listed as one of the cause to have this. And as far as the treatment goes, it starts with therapy, if necessary, medical care, and if not, if it cannot be called, cannot be cured, then of course the surgical treatment. So that's what we have on spina bifida. Let's move on. See you soon. Take care. Bye bye.